Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to SPA. Drew, what's SPA? Well, for years now, us here at the Emerging Leaders Society of Spokane have been putting on the Spokane Philanthropy Awards as a way to highlight the good going on right here in the Inland Northwest. In what felt like the last decade that's been 2020, I think we could all go for a fix of some positivity happening right now in the world. Starting in May, we reached out to all of you asking for nominations to those of you who knew of someone making a positive impact in our community. And boy, did you deliver. After scouring through all the nominations we received, one thing was clear. Even in the most difficult of times, even when we all had our backs against the wall, the spirit of giving back and helping others truly does win every time. Today, thanks to the numerous local organizations who have helped make this year's show a reality, we're putting $6,000 right back into the community through grants selected by today's winners. So with that, my name's Drew Henry, and let's get to some good news. Home fires claim seven lives every day, but having working smoke alarms can cut the risk of death in half. Many of us don't even think twice about replacing the batteries in our smoke alarms. However, in many vulnerable homes, these essential devices don't even exist. Enter Kaufman Engineers. Through the Red Cross's Sound the Alarm initiative, Kaufman made its largest single philanthropic gift with a $100,000 donation. That's what I call stepping up in an enormous way. Kaufman has also supported several other local community organizations over the past year, including communities and schools, Spokane Public Schools Foundation, Spokane Hope, Cancer Care Northwest, Providence Healthcare Foundation, Second Harvest, and SNAP. What do you get when you combine a tech company with a bunch of Girl Scouts? Quite a bit of awesomeness, I'd say. I try to sponsor the Girl Scouts Girl Con two years running, providing over 200 young women a night of mentoring, but it doesn't stop there. They've contributed $15,000 to Scout STEM Mobile, even creating a new resourcefulness badge to share with scouts interested in stewardship. This badge focuses on saving the environment and teaching young Girl Scouts about conservation and resourcefulness. Aside from helping Girl Scouts, ITRON has been a longtime supporter of Tom's Turkey Drive, sponsoring the arena rental for the annual Turkey Tuesday distribution to families in need. Working a full-time job and raising a young family can be a full day's work for most of us, but for Luke Tolley, that's just where he begins to make an impact. Luke's neighborhood volunteering includes the City of Spokane Community Assembly, Organizations of Northeast Spokane, Greater Hilliard Northeast Planning Alliance, Northeast Public Development Authority, Hilliard Neighborhood Council, Bemis Neighborhood Council, Whitman Neighborhood Council, the Greater Hilliard Business Association, the Hilliard Festival Association, Manhall Reserve Center Local Redevelopment Authority Advisory Council, plus volunteering over 200 hours to Lutheran Community Service helping make their largest fundraiser, the Chocolate and Champagne Gala, a possibility. Luke, we don't know where you find the time, but we thank you for continuing to make a difference in the Spokane community, for being an inspiration to others. Next, we have our first award to hand out. This young man is truly exceptional. In the past eight years, Donovan Smith has donated over 20,000 bars of soap to homeless shelters across the country. It's not just his talent of making soap that landed him in People Magazine, The Washington Post, and on the set of various national syndicated talk shows. It's who Donovan is that's got the world talking. Right now, I'm joined by our winner of this year's Young Philanthropist of the Year, Donovan Smith. Donovan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, you know, you have been doing something that's pretty cool and you've, you've changed a lot of lives across the country, not just right here in Spokane. Tell me how you got started with the soap. Uh, nine years ago, my mother and I were homeless. Um, once we recovered from being homeless, she chose to homeschool me. And one of the first lessons was learning how to make soap as a great math and science lesson, but it was also pretty fun. Um, started selling a little bit on Etsy, then moved to a seasonal marketplace. And then once I started getting attention, you know, um, across the country for a little kid running a soap business, I decided to do some good with it. Um, so 50% of my sales at that seasonal marketplace went to the organization to help me and my mother get out of homelessness. 
Um, and so it just went from there. Um, much later on, a friend who worked at a local shelter said they were getting low on soaps. And I figured I make soaps. Uh, it shouldn't hurt to, you know, help them out a little bit. Um, so I made what I called a shelter soap. Um, so it was like tiny, tiny soap. Uh, since it was a perfect size for just one time use, it was portable. They really enjoyed it, and it just went from there from other shelters needing soap also. Donovan, thank you for spending some time with us. You've already accomplished so much at a young age, and I think the best is yet to come. So thank you for spending some time, and we will definitely be looking out for what you've got coming in the future. Thank you. 2020 has made all of us feel moments of uncertainty, yet in our community we have such amazing organizations and individuals stepping up. One of these companies may be known for powering our lights that we have here today, but their involvement in our community goes so much further. The Avista Foundation has a legacy and investment in key community areas started in 2002 including education, vulnerable and limited income populations, economic and cultural vitality. Thank you, Avista, for being a sponsor of the 2020 Spokane Philanthropy Awards. We've been here for generations, working around the clock to provide clean, safe, reliable energy. We're here today supporting nonprofit organizations and helping those in need. And we'll be here tomorrow, too, energizing the future and embracing a world of possibilities. Thanks again, Avista, not just for keeping our power on, but for being a pillar of the Spokane community and continuing to reinvest back into the Spokane area for so many years. Now, let's get back to some news. As we saw earlier with Donovan Smith, there are young people right here in Spokane making a difference far past their years. Jordan Embry is another example of absolutely crushing it at such a young age. Oh, and don't think a little bit of cold temperatures are going to scare Jordan away. On the coldest day of the year, she garnered donations for the pivotal blessings under the bridge. Armed with courage and a pair of earmuffs, she made deliveries to the most vulnerable in need. Jordan, you don't only have an enormous heart, but from the looks of things, you're a lot tougher than me as well. It's time to give out our second award of the evening. This award goes to someone who's been a contributing member of our community for years. First nominated for our Emerging Philanthropist of the Year, this nominee has quite the story. Five years ago, he didn't have a job or a car. After turning his life around, he's now changing the lives of others. Through his nonprofit, Giving Backpacks, he has helped give away over 3,700 backpacks full of essential items to those in need. When COVID-19 hit, he knew he needed to do something. In a short time, he helped raise over 50 thousand dollars on Facebook Live providing over 3,000 meals to families in Spokane County. Rick's inspiration and devotion to help others is a great example of the large impact that can be sparked by one individual. The winner of this year's outstanding philanthropist goes to none other than Rick Clark. Rick Clark, thank you for joining us. Uh, Rick, I want to ask you about you started this Facebook Live. At that point, we were all dealing with so much in our own lives. And you said, you know what, I'm going to step up and do something. And you started with one day and one day turned into another. Tell me how you decided to get started on that. Well, yeah, we were all kind of stuck indoors. And uh, I have a nonprofit called Giving Backpacks. And I wasn't able to get out and do the stuff that we normally do. And so I was kind of going crazy, stir crazy at home. And um, my wife said, well, do what you do. Get online and see if you can't help somebody. So I, I got online and I was just trying to raise enough money to order some pizza Rita pizza uh, to help support them. And then I was going to send that pizza to a homeless shelter and that would be supporting them as well. And we could do all of it from our home. And um, we gave it a shot. And I thought, you know, maybe I could earn a hundred or two hundred dollars. And that first night, I think we raised four hundred or five hundred dollars. And then uh, I tried it again the second night and I thought for sure there's no way people are going to keep giving the second night. And it was over a thousand dollars the second night. And so, wow. yeah, that just kept going. Uh, we just kept it going for about 44 days <laughs> and we ended up with 50, uh, a little over $51,000 that we raised in 44 days. It averaged over a thousand dollars every single night for a, just a quick little Facebook video 
Um, it was a win-win for everybody because people at home that were stuck got to got to help, and then we helped the restaurants, and at the same time, we also helped a lot of different agencies around town uh, with food insecurities and stuff like that. So, what do you think it is about people in our area that they decide to to step up in such a big way? You know, I, I wish I knew the answer to that. It's amazing it, uh, for the last five years doing nonprofit work and outreach for homeless. Um, the, the people in Spokane have just always come through. And so that whole process was just amazing. I could not believe that 45 days later, people were still giving. And there was a lot of $5 donations. There was thousands of $5 donations. Um, so it was just people doing the best they could with what they had. And we were all kind of not one, we were all kind of wondering like where our lives were going with our jobs and finances and stuff like that. So it was just amazing to see people, even in times of uncertainty, say, you know what, I'm going to join this group of people, hundreds of people and do this together. And it really kind of helped us get through the moment. You know, I think that there's a huge misconception with philanthropy that people think philanthropists are people who come from a lot of money, have a lot of money and, and they just write checks and, and that's not you. You don't, you don't come from a lot of money. You weren't blessed to have just a huge bank account to, to give yet you found a way to make a huge difference. What would you say to somebody who is in a similar situation that says, you know, I don't have the means to give, what would you say to them on how they can make a difference? Just never give up. And um, if you have an idea, something that you want to do to help the world, um, stick with it. Uh, you, you know, if you don't see results in the first week, don't just give up, just keep it going. You know, when we did this, it was one backpack at a time, literally. And it, it evolved into 6,000 backpacks that, that didn't come overnight. That was just, doing the right thing at the right time for the right people. And if you, if your heart is in the right place, um, people will follow you. People will want to know how can I be a part of that? You know? Um, and so when you bring joy to the world, it radiates and it, it kind of rubs off on other people. And so I would just say, um, just stay focused and, and never give up. Just keep going. Rick Clark. Thank you. You inspire me and uh, you're making a huge difference in Spokane. I know you, you see the needle getting moved, but thank you for everything you do in our community. Thank you so much. What Rick has done to combat hunger is so crucial to so many out there that sometimes have no idea where their next meal will come from. There's another amazing local company doing all they can to help as well. Inland Group has constantly given time and resources to fight the battle against hunger with Second Harvest. But like so many of these different companies we're learning about today, they do so much more. This includes utilizing the general contracting arm of the business to help provide affordable housing and shelter options for those in our community. In partnerships with Catholic Charities, they have helped in the construction of the Father Bach buildings downtown and are currently partnering with Volunteers of America on the construction of the new Hope House. Other local organizations they have supported include SNAP, the Ronald McDonald House, Elevations, Women Helping Women, Blessings Under the Bridge, and the Spokane Television Book Drive. Well, these next guests we have may be small in stature, but they're making up with it with their huge hearts. Haley and Hannah are sisters who are ages 5 and 12, and they've been using their contagious joy and creativity to bless the homeless spreading love and joy. The list of things these two sweet girls have been doing includes filling stockings, making candy bags, creating hygiene kits, and baking. Their most recent project was passing on love from the Facebook group, A World of Hearts. They handmade over 300 hearts, cutting them out for hours, handwriting personal words of inspiration, and these hearts alongside specially made decorated candy bags were given out this past Easter. I'm now joined by the Allen sisters, Haley and Hannah. Haley and Hannah Allen, thank you two for uh, visiting with me. So you two are sisters, right? Yes. No, you can't tell, you look exactly the same. <laughs> You two uh, are doing a lot cooler things than I was doing at your age. You know, a lot of uh, girls your age aren't spending their free time going out and helping. Um, so we were, we made hearts so we could make people feel important during hard times and made people want to smile. So. And how did, how did it go? I mean, you, you made them, you brought them to people. What would they think? Um, it was really fun because I got to see people smile and it, every seeing other people smile makes me happy. So it was just really amazing to see people smile during hard times like this. 
Yeah, it's it's important. I mean, it's such a, a small thing that can make somebody's entire day. So thank you two for doing that. Tell me, uh, you guys have also done a, a few other things with Blessings Under the Bridge and you've filled some candy bags and what other fun projects have you done? Um, we go to the winter event and we help out. We normally do the hot cocoa stand, which is like my favorite time of the year because we get to experience what most people like have in Spokane and we get to help them. So that's really fun. So, so it makes you realize that some people aren't as fortunate as, as you know, you are, yeah. or we are and opens your eyes a little bit. Yeah. It makes me grateful for what we have. Definitely. What, uh, tell me, you know, again, you guys are doing this at such a young age and I think that's so amazing. What do you, what would you tell the other kids your age who maybe want to go out and get back into our community? Um, I would tell them to when things get like hard and makes you want to give up, like never give up and try your hardest all the time. I think that's amazing. Again, Haley, Hannah, you two at your age. Um, I wish that I was half as cool as you are when I was <laughs> five and 12 years old, but I'll get there one day. So. Nice to chat with you guys. Yeah, you too. And that just made my day. Well, it's time for a huge thank you. Spokane Teachers Credit Union is more than just an awesome credit union. As a member-owned financial cooperative, STCU's Community Investment Program provides financial, in-kind, and volunteer support to nonprofit organizations that serve communities and citizens in Eastern Washington and North Idaho. Here's a few words from our friends over at STCU. Hi, I'm Kristen Piscopo. I'm part of the community relations team at STCU, and I'm also a former Emerging Leader Society board member. Hi, I am Buffy Newstad. I'm also part of the community relations department at STCU, and I'm a member of Emerging Leader Society. This year I joined the board. Here at STCU, we love the opportunity to be a supporter and a sponsor of the Spokane Philanthropy Awards. We want to take a moment to congratulate this year's nominees. While this year's award ceremony may look a little different, the caliber of this group is as strong as ever. The time and resources of your collective efforts truly enhances the quality of all of our lives and ensures its impact will be felt far into the future. So thank you to the nominees and the winners for your selflessness, and thank you Emerging Leaders Society and Spokane County United Way for recognizing these remarkable people and organizations. Thanks STCU, you may be here for good, but we think you're overall pretty awesome. Across our country, we've witnessed calls to end racial injustice, and let's just be honest, in the year 2020, it's time to not just listen, but to enact change. We have a shining light right here in our community who's been hard at work for years. Sandra Williams is an activist, lecturer, filmmaker, and entrepreneur who has been addressing issues of discrimination, equity, and social justice for nearly 40 years. She is the publisher and editor of The Black Lens and the founder and executive director of the Carl Maxey Center, an African-American cultural center whose mission is to uplift, empower, and transform Spokane's black community from the inside out. In 2013, Sandra was appointed by Washington Governor Jay Inslee as the Eastern Washington Representative for the Washington State Commission of African American Affairs, which she served on until 2018. She's also a member of the Mayor's Advisory Council on Multicultural Affairs, a member of the Spokane branch of the NWACP, and a founding member of Spokane Community Against Racism. In 2018, she was honored with the YWCA Women of Achievement's Carl Maxey Racial and Social Justice Award. Sandy quit her job in 2015 to focus on the Black Lens. She writes most of the stories in the monthly newspaper, drops off copies at some of the local businesses, and has about 250 subscribers. When she first started, she wanted to tell happy stories about African Americans in the community who are doing good. It's thanks to heroes like Sandy who continue to work towards a community of equality and justice regardless of the color of one's skin. This next company helped raise $5,000 for the Martin Luther King Jr. Center by selling pint glasses with the MLK Center and Commission's logo for Juneteenth. 
After the George Floyd mural on Shacktown Community Bicycle was vandalized, this company offered to pay for a video security system for the business and issued them a check days after the faces had been covered up with white paint. The different causes they have donated to include the Spokane Human Rights Commission and the Spokane County Human Rights Task Force. In each December, they choose 12 different nonprofits to give $1,000 to. This past year, that list included St. Margaret's Women and Children's Shelter, Crosswalk Youth Shelter, Spokanimal, Hoopfest Midnight Basketball Association, CASA, Terrain, the Odyssey Youth Movement, Scraps, Second Harvest, Women and Children's Free Restaurant and Community Kitchen, Washington State Firefighters Association, and Teen and Kid Closet. Our winner for the Philanthropic Small Business of the Year goes to No Library. John and Cindy, thank you so much for being with me, owners of No Library. Thank you for having us. You guys do uh, some pint glass fundraisers. Could you tell us a little bit about that? That first week of COVID when the schools uh, were a little bit behind not getting their cafeteria structure set up, there was a full week when kids in Spokane weren't able to get meals and their families as well. And there was huge layoffs in the hospitality sector, which a lot of families depend on for an income. Uh, Cindy volunteers up at Logan Elementary, which is an economically um, adverse school. And um, working with their principal and Marcus Riccelli, our local house uh, representative, they were able to let us team up with Logan Elementary, turn the brewery's kitchen into a commissary and make 1,100 meals that we were able to deliver each day for the children, but not only for the children, but the families of those children. Um, and I got to give a shout out to Christy of Ultimate Bagel because, you know, some good share, some good. And she jumped on and made 200 more meals. And I think the power of that is just collaborating. And what Cindy often says is we all want to help. We all want to give. We just don't know where to go and where to start. And I think part of what NOLI is is an initiator. And then we help bring people together that in turn connect us to other people. And through that, what we got connected to was Logan Elementary to then House Representative Marcelli started Spokane Food Fighters. And then we got behind that and made, I don't know, 2,000 t-shirts that we sold and raised $40,000 with our community. Wow. And we also then were with Big Table that helps the hospitality industry. And through that, we were, went back and got connected with Lance Kistler of the Spokane Human Rights Commission rights commission who then connected us with freya at the dr uh martin luther king jr center which allowed us to do a special pint glass and raise money during covid for that and kind of bring a lot of things together so it's really this blanket of weaving of community that we're fortunate or blessed to get to be a part of cindy i want to ask you you know a lot of businesses right now are, are playing things close to the vest and, and they're they're just fighting for survival. Um, what made you guys step into this and say, there's a need, we're gonna fill it? Well, I think it's been a tough time for everybody. Um, I think the joy that, that we get, John and I, and then also our employees get this joy when we know that we can go out and help, help people that are hurting. Um, one of the greatest things was when we were doing the sandwiches for Logan Elementary, um, one of the gals in our, in our kitchen went with us to deliver the sandwiches and she said you know i'm always on the receiving end of giving she goes you you can't believe the joy i feel today being able to be the one that gives to somebody in need and when you hear that it just makes you realize how important it is even though it's tough times for all of us um you know there's always someone that's doing better than you or someone that's doing not as well as you um I think you step out of yourself and say, you know what, we can help somebody. We, we have the ability to do this. So um, for us, it, it just brings us joy. John and Cindy with No Library, thank you so much for all you do in this community. You are a inspiration and honestly, uh, you set such a great example for all small businesses to look out for more than just themselves and uh, reinvest back into the community. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. 
And now it's time to check on the weather. Hey, Tim, how's it uh, looking out there? Now it's time to check on the weather. Looks like another regular nice fall day in Spokane. What do you think? As we've mentioned, our sponsors of this year's awards have stepped up in a huge way so I can try and portray the awesomeness that's going on in our community. Sponsors such as the MBA program at Whitworth University. Whitworth University's MBA program is designed to prepare you for growth in your career, energized by learning with and from other professionals. Gain more than just a degree with your commitment of time and effort and invest in your future. Whitworth's MBA program takes a holistic approach to help you develop as a leader and support your involvement in your community. They recognize the demands of working professionals and the commitments outside of academics. They strive to be transparent in your academic planning so that you can keep control over your professional and personal life. I'm Heather Sulpizio. I work at Providence Healthcare. I'm a human resource business partner there. I think the Whitworth MBA helped me get me where I am today by allowing me to realize the community that Spokane is. They allowed me to see that I could work for an organization that matched my core values. Whitworth is more than just an MBA program going from class to class and just getting it done. It's more of a community that you're there to build and it lasts beyond your MBA. From everything we've seen so far today, we know Spokane is home to a ton of huge hearts and amazing people. It's also a hub for medical research and development. Take these two things and put them together and you get the relationship between the Selinger Schoen Foundation and the Washington State University School of Nursing. Rosemary and Samuel Selinger connected through Second Harvest with Teresa Begon, a doctoral student at the college whose research interests include diet and nutrition. Through this research initiative, they wanted to demonstrate the impact of Second Harvest food distribution services on our local community. The Salingers have supported Second Harvest since 2009. Both have been involved with several nonprofits in Spokane and have seen how food in these organizations received from Second Harvest contributes to their larger success. Last year, the couple donated through the Family Foundation to support the artwork for Second Harvest Mobile Market Bus. They also have facilitated multiple partnerships with local medical professionals to provide increased medical services to people facing hunger and deepen insight into the effect of food insecurity on one's health. Next, we're gonna meet a student of Gonzaga University School of Law. She plans to focus her law career in public interest aimed at reforming our current system and inspires to develop restorative practices to become a worldwide model for change. She's been a volunteer crisis response advocate with Lutheran Community Services Victim Advocacy Team since 2017. As a volunteer, she takes multiple eight-hour shifts per month. During this time, she's the first on-call answering a 24-hour support line and responding to local emergency rooms who support survivors of sexual assault. When interacting with survivors, she is providing advocacy, crisis intervention, and informing victims of their rights under Washington law. Oh, and she co-founded the Revive Center for Returning Citizens, a peer-led nonprofit organization which is constructed of formerly justice-involved individuals who work one-on-one -on -one with those coming back into the community from incarceration. The organization connects them with community partners that provide housing, legal support, basic needs, and mental health treatment services. The winner of our Emerging Philanthropist of the Year is Amber Letchworth. Now, you are going to the Gonzaga Law School right now, and that's, that's a lot to uh, do just on your own. But aside from going to school, you're also volunteering at Lutheran Community Services. And tell me a little bit about why you wanted to get involved there and why you think it's so important. Yeah, so when I first moved to Spokane, um, I heard a lot about Lutheran Community Services, and I didn't really know what it was. And then I started studying social work and um, kind of thinking that that might be a career path for me and um, started looking at places that I could kind of volunteer to get my feet wet. And so um, I reached out to the coordinator uh, the volunteer coordinator and, you know, realized that I could get trained and, um, and it was a really good way to, um, you know, work on my, my skills and things like that, but, but that there's such a huge need in our community and that there's such a lack and a disconnect in the services that people receive, in, you know, when such a 
traumatic event happens, like, you know, being assaulted. And so I would always do the late night shifts because I have other obligations during the day. And so I would take the midnights to 8 a.m.s. And so, um, you know, your phone rings, you go in the other room, you, you know, you answer it, you've got your folder with all your resources set out. And, um, you know, you, you do a little brush up before your, uh, before your shift, make sure that you're current on, on whatever someone might need. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's just a phone call, someone who can't sleep and they're having, you know, some thoughts and some feelings about their, you know, their trauma and they just want to talk it out with someone. Sometimes it's a 10 minute phone call. Other times you're being called out by the hospital and they want you, um, they've, you know, a survivor has requested an advocate. And so you'll go in there and you'll, you'll sit with them, you know, right. Sometimes you meet them right in the waiting room and you're waiting with them. You know, sometimes it's 20 minutes, sometimes it's two or three hours and you're waiting for, you know, um, a doctor to come out, come back, and then you're there to assist them through the whole examination, through the police interview. Um, you know, you're there to advocate for them, um, and yeah, just really kind of be there. And they're, they're they're missing that human element at the hospital. You know, some things are so like business, business, business that you get to be there just for the advocate or just for the survivor, and you know, you don't have an agenda like everyone else in the room. And so it's just it's it's really rewarding, you know, to be there. So. Well, Amber, thank you for joining us, but more importantly, thank you for being an advocate for some of the people out in our community who truly need it the most. So we really yeah. appreciate everything you're doing. Thank you, Drew. During the COVID-19 crisis, many out there have struggled to even know where they might be living in a week's time. As a Spokane area's community action leader, SNAP takes the lead in educating and empowering our low income neighbors. And when COVID hit, Bank of America came calling to make sure SNAP's housing counseling team could serve clients impacted by a loss of income due to COVID-19. They created a $50,000 grant for homeowners and renters in the area to avoid foreclosure or eviction. SNAP estimates it will serve 120 families in the Spokane community thanks to the help of Bank of America. Having lived here my entire life, I have to admit Spokane continues to get cooler and cooler every day. And the growth of our local arts is a huge part of that. Ginger Ewing's been right at the forefront of that movement. Sick of seeing talented artists move to other cities, she decided to take action. She co-founded Terrain. Terrain is pioneering a nonprofit building community and economic opportunity for artists, makers, and cultural creators of the Inland Northwest. She also founded Window Dressing in 2014, Terrain's storefront gallery program that fills vacant spaces with art installations and serves as a commissioner for the Spokane Arts and Washington State Arts Commission. Her tireless advocacy for the arts has prompted the YWCA to give her the 2019 Women of Achievement Award for Arts and Culture. This year, she found 16 local artists, all who are black, indigenous, or people of color, to paint the downtown Black Lives Matter mural. Each artist got a letter to use as a canvas to share their story and voice. Thank you, Ginger, for not only making Spokane cooler, but for being an advocate of the arts and so many other things in our community. It's now time to thank another amazing sponsor of this year's awards. As a community foundation for Eastern Washington and North Idaho, Inovia partners with people who want to make the world better. They work to address and solve our region's problems, help those in need, identify and respond to our greatest opportunities, and leave a lasting impact. In the 45 years since their inception, Inovia has helped distribute over $75 million in grants and scholarships. Since 1974, we've been connecting donors with our region's most pressing causes across eastern Washington and North Idaho. Driven by the generosity of our community and the passionate support of our partners, we envision vibrant and sustainable communities where every person has the opportunity to thrive. We've made a commitment to ignite generosity across our 20-county region, awarding more than $90 million in grants to organizations transforming lives and communities. No one person can do this work alone. It requires all of us. Together we are Inovia Foundation, driving community transformation. And we are back for the final segment of the 2020 Spokane Philanthropy Awards. The next couple has been an anchor of philanthropy in the Spokane community for many years. Tom and Gail Stevenson have served the United Way of Spokane County, Second Harvest, Joya, the Spokane Neighborhood Action Partners, Junior League of Spokane, Women Helping Women, 
the Boys and Girls Club, and many more. Gail is very active today with the Assistance Organization. This organization works mainly with hands-on projects for nonprofits in our local area. Tom is very active with At The Core. In partnership with Second Harvest, At The Core has helped over 150 businesses and churches adopt 70 elementary schools and 30 middle and high schools in Spokane County. These wonderful businesses and churches fund a package called Bite To Go and deliver the packages to the schools each week. In the elementary schools, the teachers slide the Bite To Go packages into the students' backpacks at recess for the child to take home and eat over the weekend. Most of our adoptive organizations do more by listening to schools and helping where they can. This might include being a reading buddy, helping with school events, and providing school supplies and clothing for children in need. The middle and high school programs are run by a club at the school where the students pack and deliver the Bite To Go packages of food. Tom volunteers over a thousand hours right here in Spokane County for Bite To Go. And now it's time to pass out one final award for the evening. This company has been supporting the Spokane community for decades. At the YMCA, they've given back extensively over the years through donations and scholarships, but also through consistent volunteerism, both on their boards and through their programs. By actively encouraging their staff to give back their time through paid volunteer hours, they amplify the effect of the organization by making and affecting many regional nonprofits and serving as a constant supporter who never waves in their commitment of community. Additionally, they offer a scholarship program to help ensure future generations can attain the education they need. The list of local organizations they support includes Second Harvest, YMCA, YWCA, United Way, Red Cross, and many more. The winner of this year's Philanthropic Corporation of the Year is none other than Northwest Farm Credit Services. And I am now joined by Bill Perry from Northwest Farm Credit Services. Bill, thanks for joining us. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. I don't know if everybody knows that Northwest Farm Credit Services is right here out in uh, Airway Heights, right? That's right. Yep. So you guys started. Here in Spokane. Yeah, you started here in Spokane and you're super invested here in Spokane. Tell me a little bit about um, your organization and you know, you guys give back to a lot of local organizations like Second Harvest, YMCA, and I think some of them really tie into your background as, as a financial institution. You want to talk about that? That's right. You know, I, I think it, it all ties back to our purpose, uh, which is to improve the lives of our customers and our employees in the communities where we work and live. And, you know, the, the organizations in and around the Spokane community are important for our business and important for the community. So where we can, we really appreciate the opportunity to give back to organizations like, like you mentioned, Second Harvest and YMCA and others uh, that really make uh, the community a great place to be. I think the, the word corporate is like this big, scary, bad word. But, you know, you guys, what I've seen and what we've heard from the nominations that came in is your employees are really getting out there. They're members of the community and they're going out there and serving. Talk to me a little bit just about how invested your whole entire organization is from the top to the bottom about giving back to the community. Well, I think it's part of our culture uh, is, is probably the best way to, to describe it. A few years ago, we celebrated a 100 year anniversary of the farm credit system of which our company is a part. And as part of that celebration, we created um, uh, a function that we call 100% committed and through that program, our employees are able to designate uh, funds on their behalf to donate to an, or to an organization, and kind of they combine that with volunteer time. And so it's a nice chance for us to not only give financially, but also give uh, through our time and talents uh, as employees. And I think that's a nice way to, uh, for our employees to be able to feel uh, the power of that financial giving and giving back to the community. Bill? Thank you for spending some time with us. I think that uh, you guys really are an inspiration to other corporations or businesses in Spokane, just to show that you can run a successful business and still give back. Uh, and that's important. So we want to thank you for that. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. And that's our awards for this year. If you feel inspired by any of the amazing stories we've heard tonight or by any of the organizations who so desperately need your help, please reach out to them through the links down in the description. 
you can see that together we can make a huge difference by working together through small acts of kindness. If you'd like to learn more about the Emerging Leaders Society, you can also find more information right down below. Thanks to all of our amazing sponsors, including the Journal of Business, who graciously donated advertising leading up to the event, and they published an amazing summary of today's winners. Congrats to all of our nominees and winners who inspire all of us to do more. And that will do it for the 2020 Spokane Philanthropy Awards. I'm Drew Henry reminding you that no matter how hard things get, there's always good out there in the world. Thank you for making this year's awards so very special. We'll see you all very soon. Mm -hmm.